This is a book review of The Silver Age, Hawk and the Dove. Now this is obviously created by Steve Ditko, Hawk and the Dove, and this was well, back in the uh, 60s. So uh, it's part of, obviously part of the DC Omnibus Collections. Now obviously not a hardback Omnibus Collection, but it's uh, obviously one of the paperback one. Obviously fairly thin, it's about 208 pages. Obviously this book came out in, I think, 2018. And there's the list of all the various people, quite a good list of people. You've got Steve Skeets, Skates, don't know how to say his name, uh, Gil Kane, Neil Adams, Steve Ditko, obviously, and Nick Cardi, and so on and so on. And there's quite a lot of stories here. I mean, Showcase 75, The Hawk and the Dove 1 to 6, and Teen Titans, issue 21. That was quite nice to include that as well. And uh, so I'm just going to quickly go through this book. And let's go. The artwork is superb throughout. I must admit, I love Steve Ditko. I love Gil Gaines' work as well. So uh, that's that. So you've got that there and then onto the actual stories that are included. It's got a nice list there of all the stories you can see there. And obviously the people involved as well. Which is quite nice. They've got all that. Obviously, Gil Kane, the cover art, etc. Brilliant. And then you go into the. Thing. But I have to say, the actual characters of these characters, Hawk and Dove, I mean, they're really. It was a really weird origin. I don't think it, was, it wasn't to me, it was explained. It suddenly just happened. You've got this voice. This voice suddenly, they're in a locked away because of something they get themselves into because they rush into something and they're locked away. And then suddenly this voice mysteriously appears. But there's no real explanation. The voice. What it's a bit like I thought was Shazam kind of thing, you know. Always you, they turn, they can turn in when they call out their name, so it's a sort of Shazam like thing. But there's no real explanation, they, and they also don't have particularly great powers. They just have costume. They just have costume, and maybe they slightly have to a bit more. He worked out. Obviously, Hawk works out, and uh, I must admit I loved uh, Hawk and, and Dove. Obviously, in the uh, Teen Titans TV series on Netflix, really good. That was a real great addition there. So you've got that initial thing. Obviously, initial stories are all Ditko. And you've got the, obviously, origin there. And they're obviously arguing between the obviously, at university. They're fighting. There's lots of trouble. It seems to be quite often a theme that seems to run through these antagonisms between the police, the law. And you've also got a strict father, very strict father. Obviously, he was a judge as well. And that, of course, gives opportunity for lots of people that learns to... I'm going to take my vengeance against this person, etc. for putting me away for 55,000 years. Those sort of things. So you've got uh, protection back, etc., etc. But he does obviously, he's not particularly keen on Hawk and Dove either. So Hawk and Dove sort of uh, really go against, of course, they're vigilantes, they're going off. Though I must admit, I always think, well, yeah, okay, but how are the normal police going to stop, uh, you know, Dark Side or uh, what's your name? It's fine, you say, oh, yeah, fine. Because they wouldn't. They would never hope to stop. Though, of course, in this, there's not really any sort of super duper 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 villains. It's not like Dr. Octopus turns up or Doc Doom turns up. Obviously, they're DC, not DC characters, but uh, Lex Luthor, say. Lex Luthor or the Joker. There's no, there's no real crossover with that. The only crossover, of course, in this is the uh, Teen Titans, which is really nice. And you got, and I found that with the, like, with the Ditko's um, Speedball. You have sort of like a selection of very minor villains, but still, it doesn't have to always be the vulture, it doesn't always have to be Doc Ock or Green Goblin, does it? But you've got these characters, as sort of, and you've got some lovely visual art again. I, I just love Ditko work anyway. Ditko was just great, his panels, the way he laid everything is just brilliant. And I loved his later stuff as well. Weird, unusual, very odd, but it was still top, top. And you've got here with, obviously, you've got the usual, not so much that in this book, compared with, say, like Peter Parker, you've got, uh, very obviously, various women in the story, and uh, that, uh, you know, you've got the characters' interaction with, but it's not so much developed, but perhaps that would have been developed later on, maybe if the series had gone on to 50 or 60 issues. Who knows that maybe those storylines would have developed more. And obviously, the differences between, obviously, Dove being, from the name, obviously, uh, being more pacifist, though he's not all the time, and Hawk being obviously the more get in there and uh, sort things out and train up and become, you know, the best. But again, they're, they're, really, they're permanently in conflict. Lots of scenes where you've got, uh, like there, where you've got, uh, they always have that with sort of anguish. That you, but Ditko did that great. I love that. Obviously, Park, 
Peter Parker as well, you had all those stories. And he's just absolute smoke. You've got a whole page of him sort of anguish all the way through about what should he do, what I, what's the meaning of everything. Just, you know, and then obviously got the problems with, obviously got his mum as well. Uh, we seem to have a, but again, lots of these storylines not really developed in the end because, of course, like I said, the series didn't last. Well, it might have lasted, I don't know. I mean, I'm, but in terms of this book, I'm only going on this. So maybe there were a lot more Hawk and Dove stories that uh, later on, but I'm just referring it to this. And you've got him training the way, lifting weights and that sort of stuff. And even when they go to bed, there's still, you've got them lying there in bed, sort of having conflict. The dad comes in and sort of moans at them for keeping everyone away. Get this out of thing. No, no point does he ever realise, of course. I, maybe he does. Maybe it's a bit like old uh, Stacy, you know, Gwen Stacy, where he obviously knows that Peter Parker is who he is, and uh, but he still can't because of his duties, etc. I don't know. However, you've got here Steve Ditko still. We've got a prison one that's very well done. Did that one a few times as well, prison ones. And you've got uh, obviously the convicts, uh, you've got uh, the family all uh, there. And also you've got uh, the next one. Then Ditko, obviously, for some weird reason, I don't know the reason, there is no, unfortunately, no essay or foreword or afterward, which would have been great, but DC don't always do those. I wish they would. Just a nice sort of two or three pages. Marvel does quite often add those sort of things, and you can, like, like Roy Thomas or something, you'd put an explanation of why something happened. You know, that Steve Ditko went off and did this, or working on something else. However, got Gil Kane. This one, you've got the cat. Great Gil, Gil Kane sort of uh, covers. You always know immediately you look at Gil Kane's artwork. You've got that star, the way he does the faces and everything. Just the whole rhythm of the comic just completely changes. I mean, I love Steve Ditko's game. Brilliant. Excellent as well. But with this, you can really tell uh, Gil Kane. I just love this. So uh, it's just a pleasure to see this work as well. And you've got the story then, another story where, of course, Sort of connected with the father as well, which is quite good. Man found beaten, hospitalised, etc. And there's, uh, they're always getting themselves into awkward situations, which of course they would. I mean, you've got these, you suddenly go, the police are suddenly, you know, see this guy, I mean, they're going around in, in a costume, what they expect, you know, you're going to be. And so they, they're obviously going to get. Peter Parker, that Spider Man, would have had to say, well, he did. I mean, at least he could fly off and go, obviously, on using his web, and he would go whizzing off. He'd always like, leave the police or go, oh. But these characters can't do that. They've got no ability. All they do is run off. And luckily, they can change quickly. That's the only sort of superpower, as far as I can see, is that they change backwards and forwards. So make, but uh, of course, doesn't seem to be any development in the story, particularly where people are thinking, well, hang on, Don, you were there. Well, what's happened? To, you know, why is that character? But I expect at some point, after about 50 or 60 issues, someone put two and two together. You got uh, again lots of great characters. Um, you got standard, typical Gil Kane, just always great characters that he always has there. And then uh, the language, of course, and there is a Marie. And well, you got characters obviously changing there. And oh, that's I was just looking for this bit. This is this is a bit more with with the father. So you've got this character that's obviously pleading. I didn't do anything, and obviously the father has got some not. Obligation to him, obviously, it's not because he's so strict. He literally, he can't obviously uh, be the judge for this case because, of course, he's friends. So, you know, that's the thing. Obviously, he'd done something early in his life, and therefore, but he still believes that uh, that he's uh, that he's innocent. And obviously, read the book to find out more. It's always the way. So, on to the next story, which is a real good story, and then. Well, the next one is into the Teen Titans. And I love the Teen Titans. Great set of characters and great bit of artwork as well. Just absolutely good. You've obviously got uh, Robin, Wonder Girl, Kid Flash, and Speedy's involved as well. So unfortunately with this one, of course, is that, of course that storyline did not finish at that point, continued, obviously. So if you want to read out more, Three more, obviously get the Silver, Silver Age Teen Titans book, and there's, of course, omnibus editions of those, or maybe something like the Showcase books. That's uh, a good source as well. And then you got onto Hawk and Dove, uh, and again, they've seen got issues with the father as well. There's Judgment in a Small Dark Place, and then that's it. Sadly, the story just ends 
Now, I don't know what happened afterwards. So I'll st investigate further. More Hawk and Dove stories. I'm certain there were more than this, but uh, for the Silver Age book, as far as I'm concerned, that was it. So I thoroughly enjoyed this, even though I must admit the story, why did it all happen in the first place, wasn't particularly explained. Um, but I thought they were quite good characters, quite interesting storylines. And of course, absolute superb art, Steve Ditko and Gil Kane. So I have to say, totally, totally recommended. And uh, yeah, loved it.